Uh, hi everyone, my name is Jennifer Gilbert and I am the Senior Technical Information Specialist at the National Library of Medicine, part of the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. I serve as the chair of the library's Digital Repository Working Group, which initiated our Fedora repository back in 2009. NLM Digital Collections has grown since then. From an initial set of less than 1,000 to today's more than 8 million digital objects. I'd like to acknowledge my colleague, Doran Shalvi, for presenting the details on our system architecture at yesterday's meeting. I won't repeat that because today I'm going to share with you the recent work we have done to relaunch an award-winning digital collection called Profiles in Science. It was created in the 1990s and tell some of the stories of scientific discovery in the 20th century. Profiles in Science is a curated collection of 41 profiles that document the history of science, medicine, and public health. The project involved migrating this online digital archive to a new platform integrated with NLM Digital Collections. The NLM's Lister Hill National Center for Biomedical Communications or Lister Hill for short, developed the original system in the mid-1990s and first released it to the public in September 1998. This is a snapshot of the original homepage. Each profile was accessed via the thumbnail on the homepage, just one in indication that this project was in front of the curve. The collection includes more than 30,000 digitized items some of which were selected from NLM's archives and modern manuscripts collections, and the rest from those of collaborating institutions. After 20 years of maintaining the system, Lister Hill shifted their project priorities and a new home was needed for this project. NLM Digital Collections was an obvious choice for the reimagining of these collections. We had a long established open source community designed and supported application Fedora, that forms the foundation of NLM's digital repository. The project also gave us the opportunity to add applications to our infrastructure, namely Spotlight for display of the profiles collections and archive space as the metadata management system. This slide will illustrate at a high level the migration path and current presentation. The 30,000 plus objects were migrated from the legacy system to the Fedora repository. The descriptive and administrative metadata were exported from the legacy system via solar XML files and mapped to archive space, which is now the library's archival metadata management platform. Staff use archive space to describe the profile's content at the item level, as it was described in the legacy system as well as for permissions tracking and establishment of name and subject authorized access points. We then mapped the archive space descriptive metadata to the Fedora repository, where it was repackaged with their digitized objects. Our solar application indexes the contents to reveal through Blacklight the resources to the public on the digital collection site. Here is a screenshot of one profile's item, part of the Dr. Charles Drew profile. This image, like all images in digital collections, can be downloaded, either a master TIFF or standard JPEG file. You can see in the metadata that we have two identifiers. The profiles in science ID is what we internally call the legacy ID, brought over in the migration as part of the description, but is no longer the unique identifier. That local numbering system has been replaced with the NLM unique identifier system. So these items are now fully integrated in the digital collection site. So continuing along the path, we have the Fedora repository as a central data store used to preserve and provide access to the profiles collections at the item level via digital collections. Next, we implemented Spotlight as the user interface platform that showcases the profile's content in a curated way. Each of the 41 profiles was rebuilt in Spotlight by pulling in copies of the digitized objects and metadata from Fedora 
via our IIIF Morris image server using the IIIF presentation API. With Spotlight, we can customize display and search results in a way that presents what we call the story of each profile. This is a screenshot of the new homepage. Each thumbnail is the entry point to a person's profile. Diving deeper, the migration of the comprehensive legacy metadata was arguably the most complex piece of the project. I mentioned the mapping to archive space and the mapping of descriptive metadata to Fedora. But wait, there's more. The repository up to now had only ingested Mark XML from our iOS, and now we are tasked with including archival content and metadata from a brand new source. We had just put our archive space instance into production, so our developers and content owners had a lot to learn all at once. Digital Collections uses a custom metadata schema called DMD index that is finely tuned to work with our solar index. Archival metadata differed enough from our standard that we couldn't quickly come to a solution on how to completely integrate it into our system but we were required to store and preserve the objects and send them to Spotlight. The solution we chose for profiles involves deploying the two types of metadata in tandem. Our developers created a custom schema called AMD index, which stands for archival metadata. Each profile's item has one of these files. The AMD index comes from yet another separate mapping from archive space to Fedora. This allowed us to meet the new requirements while keeping our standard intact. AMD index metadata is stored in the repository, but not indexed. Its sole purpose is to map to the IIIF manifest JSON file, which delivers the data to Spotlight via the API call. All items in the repository, including profiles, have a DMD index file. The metadata in this file, once indexed, drives the search and display in digital collections, and users see no difference in discovery between the two types of items. I should say that this is the solution for now, and we are open to rethinking this, especially in the context of migrating off the door three. So this bottom left of the slide is a snippet of one of our AMD index files, and on the right is a snippet of the IIIF manifest for the same item. There are some differences by design. If you look at the middle of the AMD index, you'll see the publish status element is true. That is internal use only from archive space. We only export items with that flag because we do have some restricted and embargoed items. In the IIIF manifest, you can see the shareable link for use in Spotlight only, and that is dynamically created using the NLM identifier. And at the bottom of the IIIF manifest is the story section, which we use to tag items that appear in the context of the story as a chapter title of sorts. So here is an example of the story of Charles Drew. If you remember, this is the image from a few slides ago that I showed you from Digital Collections. This image is part of the chapter called Becoming the Father of the Blood Bank. If you click on the image, it takes us to the items resource page. We are using the universal viewer for most of the profile's content. For videos, we use an HTML player because it can better handle captions, which is a 508 compliance requirement for all of our videos on the website. We are using IIIF to drive the display of the item, as well as the ability to download the same image that you could also download collections. Access to the descriptive metadata portion of the IIIF manifest is on the right, and we copy that metadata into our customized fields in Spotlight, where it is displayed below the image. And although we have deployed IIIF for internal use to populate the profile's collections in Spotlight, we are interested in expanding its functionality to others at NLM by exploring tools for, say, crowdsourcing annotations, image manipulation and sharing, and even establishment of other spotlight sites for 
MLM curated collections. Profiles and science content includes mostly documents and still images and some video and audio. The types of documents include manuscripts and letters and correspondence, articles and newspaper clippings. Some items have annotations, which were captured and preserved in the legacy system. We have brought those into spotlight as part of the uh, descriptive metadata. Some items have manual transcripts that we retained and make available for download from either digital collections or the profile site. Some items have annotations and transcripts, and the requirement was to display both, which we accomplished by including the annotation as metadata and transcripts as downloadable text files. The digital repository contains a variety of content and the addition of this archival material has diversified it even more. As I mentioned earlier, we have more than 8 million objects and are approaching 9 million objects currently in the repository. One copy of the repository is 70 terabytes in size, and for preservation purposes, we keep three copies. This is a work in progress, though we have completed the bulk of the requirements. We still need to secure the restricted items into a dark archive, and we have been discussing exactly how that's going to look. Increased user navigation. So in the current release, we are linking from Spotlight to collections and to the online finding aids. In a future release, we will reciprocate the links. Integration with other MLM digitization workflows so right now we have multiple streams of digitized content and our archival scanning is separate from our book scanning. And it would be good to combine the workflows if it's possible. And speaking of workflows, we got the migration down, but we need to design a workflow for how to include brand new content, content that hasn't been created yet. And we do have digitized manuscript collections in digital collections already. And we want to explore if it's possible to select certain pieces of those collections and reuse them as part of a new profiles collection. Modeling annotations. As I mentioned, we brought the annotations over into Spotlight, but we have never dealt with those in digital collections. And we would like to bring them over to complete the resource package. Thanks to my colleagues on this call and all those who couldn't be here today. Be sure to check out our sites and learn more about stories of scientific discovery. I'm happy to take any questions. This is Anne. I guess I just have a comment. Uh, as you were talking through it, I was exploring it and it um, it looks really good. It I, I think um, eventually we want to be able to do things with Spotlight so um, likely we'll be interested in some technical details when we're at that stage of life. Yeah, we like it so far, it's great. Uh, Jennifer, I have a question about, I, I mean, I agree the presentation was great and we too, or at least I'm interested in us using Spotlight. Um, did you have individual within your uh, department's technical services that put those collections together using Spotlight or who did that work? The, the developer, um, the developers did that work um, because we were under a time crunch and normally, you know, the content owner would create the exhibit, um, but there was, you know, they had never used Spotlight before either. Uh -huh. So, but in the future, the content owner will, you know, take more okay. responsibility for, for working with Spotlight. Mm -hmm. So that is the intent eventually to have the content owner build in the exhibits? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jennifer, this is Josh. Um, mm -hmm. Could I ask a little more about the annotations that you talked about? Um, are those uh, 
full text uh, of the of the documents that are in the collection, or what what, what do they entail? So. Most of the annotations come from a single collection, the um, Dr. Joshua Letterberg collection. He, he annotated a lot of, um, and, and he, he had a say in you know, how, how his profile was built actually. And so that's why his annotation, so you know, it could be a, a handwritten letter and then he would write a note you know, 20 years later on it. Okay. Digitized. Okay, so that's different than, so. It's not, yeah, have, it's not the research technique. We use annotation in our repository to talk about, um, you know, in, in um, open annotation. And they tend to, you know, the, the primary annotations that we have are actually not traditional annotations like what you're talking about, but rather mm -hmm. they're like the full text. We use it for the full text of the photograph, like on the image of the document. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. So. Um, so that's probably a, a whole um, complex discussion about how you present that kind of material and how you make it clear what that is and how it relates to the original, I guess. Interesting. Yes. 